Hi, this is Julie Hart, and you're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Howdy, howdy, everyone. This is Paul London, the intrepid traveler, and you are listening to Pipe Bomb Radio. Hey, this is professional wrestler and certified DDP yoga instructor Stevie Richards telling you that you're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio. This is the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, the founder and CEO of Global Force Wrestling, and you're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio. I'm waking up. You're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio with your host, the founder, Felix Olmedo, and the godfather, Nate Milton. Welcome to the new radioactive, radioactive. Welcome, everybody, to Pipe Bomb Radio. I'm back in control. I have my controls back. I have a brand new computer. I am stoked, people. I am just on cloud nine i have a brand spanking new laptop and it's badass and you know what i'm ready to rock and roll tonight and more appropriately so i've been looking forward to this interview since i set it up uh not too long ago i had this gentleman on he he, he spoke briefly i had him on during the the roddy piper uh tribute show we did earlier this summer to honor the legendary Roddy Piper, who has been one of my heroes since as far back as I can remember. That being said, taking you back to 1994, Hot Rod had been in and out of WWE over the years, and he'd periodically disappear and come back. And we see all of a sudden that he'd have, be going into this feud with Jerry Lawler, who is another person who, well, let's just be honest, he's really good on the stick. He, 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 he can match wits with the best of them. And all of a sudden, they saw this skinny kid in there in the, mix, in the middle of these two legendary icons, and they get this guy to, to, to imitate Roddy Piper. Now, if there's one person you won't, you do not want to piss off, it's Roddy Piper, let me tell you. But it was all in good fun. And when I chat, when I chatted with uh, with Pat, he is Pat the Brat Piper coming onto the show. When I chatted with him earlier this summer, he had a hell of a story. He he really had a great story, and I just had to I had to have him on to tell it because although we had him on for about it was a five minute more or less five minutes that he chatted about Roddy, he needed to be heard. People have wondered for years and years and years. At least I did. And, well, let me stop for a second and welcome everybody, uh, my co-host and partner in crime, Nate Milton. What's up, buddy? What is going on, El Jefe? How you doing this week, man? Oh, I am just telling everybody how freaking awesome I feel because I got my laptop. I got a brand spanking new one. I'm back in control. And that part I'm just thrilled about. I, I you know, I get, I, I've been running the show for four years. When I don't have control, it drives me crazy, if that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, you you are the uh, Triple H of Pipe Bomb Radio. You have to have the authority. <laughs> Don't let Austin <laughs> hear you say that. Good God. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I was just telling people. You know, we had when uh, when I interviewed uh, Pat, who was coming on tonight. He had such an incredible story that I just felt like he needed to come on and tell it because, although we were honoring the legendary Hot Rod, he had such an incredible story to tell. For the, those of us who were who were teenagers, even just you know young young people during that time, we were privileged enough to 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 watch two icons who could go in the ring toe to toe on the mic. Well, let's just say their match was a stinker. But overall, it was I was in, I was ready for that, ready to see that match between Hot Rod and Jerry Lawler because, well, you know they were hot at the time, and Piper had kept coming in and out for years, and you know he was coming back, and I was stoked. You know Roddy's going to get back to the ring and. All of a sudden, we see this skinny punk kid come out in a, in a kill, or at least it looked like one, and sounded just like him, and just told an incredible story about how this all came to be and what it was like when he went into the locker room back in 94. And he has been definitely looking forward to this interview as much as I have. I just really am just thrilled that, that we can definitely have him on, and that way he can bring up all the – he can re- take us back to our youth. How about that? 
Sounds like a good deal, man. I mean, we got a little taste of uh, Pat's story when we did the Hot Rod tribute uh, a couple months ago. But, man, now that was just the tip of the iceberg because, as you say, man, this guy has had a fascinating journey within this crazy business of pro wrestling. I can't wait to hear some more stories. Tell me about it. And he is, although he is a little under the weather, I said, you know, we can keep you on for, for 30 minutes if you like. We won't, you know, we won't keep you too long, too long because I know you're, you're not here. He said, you know what, dude, I've been waiting for this all month. We're doing this. I said, hey, all right, I ain't one to argue. This or not, he said he's on, he'll be here. He's been looking forward to it. And, you know, just he, he, he was able to, let's put it this way, he got permission from Roddy to, to, to use the Piper name. And after he left WWE, he was on the independent circuits and actually got to confront a lot of Roddy's uh, former adversaries, like a super fly Jimmy Snuka, Jerry Lawler, of all people, too, on the indie circuit. And he's going to tell us all about that. And the fact that he actually had, I want to say the Brat Camp or the Brat Pack, I think it was. I can't remember exactly how he phrased it. But he turned, he took a term that Roddy used to describe him. Coliseum video. Those of you who don't remember growing up in the 90s, Coliseum video was what WWE used at that time. Yep. And they had an interview with Roddy, and he had called him, he called Pat a brat. And, hell, Pat, Pat went with it. And he took it, and he, uh, well, that being said, I think our guest of honor has called in. Let's see if that's him. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is who I think it is, let us welcome you to the one and the only Pat the Brat Piper. Hi ho, hi ho, uh, gentlemen. How are we doing tonight? Doing great, oh. doing great. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I am just cool in the gang. I've just been the cat's ass man. I'm that box of fluffy mother duckers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wow, oh, that's man. awesome. <laughs> but uh, we were just talking about uh, a lot of things that you had gotten to do in your, in your, when you, when you were young, well, 21 years ago, really. I mean, think about it. And you and I had a chance to do, you know, for the little bit that we did for the, uh, the Hot Rod Tribute earlier this past summer. And mm-hmm. it was so, it was so good that I needed, I, I just felt the need to have you come on and, and have people tell, you know, hear your story about what you, what you got to go through getting to work with two such legendary figures in the wrestling business and how it all came to be. And, and, and of course, Nate and I will definitely throw in some questions again once you tell us a little bit more about your story and how you got involved in all this and uh, what led to the name Pat the Brat Piper. So we'll start off with how you got your, how you got your, how you got in contact with WWE through, you know, through this whole imper- impersonating in, as far as that. Uh, you, did, you didn't do just Piper. You did a few others as well. So. Yeah, uh, well, what actually happened was uh, Randy Savage had been retired. He had lost to uh, the Ultimate Warrior, and then he started doing WWE Mania, or WWF back in the day, uh, Mania, and he was uh, the basically the co-host with Todd Pettengill. Well, at WrestleMania 10, he was coming out of retirement to fight Crush. So... Todd Pettengill set up this co-host contest, and each week fans would send in videotapes, and you know they'd be impersonating WWE superstars. And I wasn't even going to send in the tape, but I was just watching week after week after week. And I'm just watching these tapes, and I'm like, wow, these people really suck. And you know, no, no offense, but you know, I was just like, oh, some of these are horrible. So I was like, what the hell? So, you know, I just I set up my camera, and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll do a couple of impersonations. And I did one of uh, Hulk Hogan, I did one of Randy Macho Man Savage, and then I did one of Roddy Piper. And then I uh, sent in the tape. Now, at this time that I was sending in the tape, that they were setting up for WrestleMania 10 and everything, and they had two guest referees for the, uh, the main events with uh, Bret Hart and, um, you know, Lex Luger. I think he was fighting Yokozuna and all that. Mm-hmm. And one of the referees was uh, Mr. Perfect, and the other referee happened to be Roddy Piper. 
So when Roddy Piper came out, Jerry Lawler was making all these comments, oh, I hate this guy, and yada, yada, yada. And so that set up for the King of the Ring. So in the meantime, I had sent in my tape, and all of a sudden I get a call, and they were like, okay, well, we, we saw your tape, we enjoyed it. Uh, we'd like to show it on the USA Network. Uh, would you have a problem with that? And I was like, no, absolutely not. So I, uh, you know, signed some paperwork. They showed my clip, and at first I didn't know wh- which clip they were going to show. You know, were they going to show the Hogan clip? Were they going to show the Macho Man clip? Ends up they showed the Piper clip. And then they called me back after I had watched it, and they were like, did you see yourself on TV? And I was like, yes, I did. Thank you very much. And they were like, well, we have a proposition for you. How would you like to be a guest on Jerry the King Lawler's King's Court? And I was like, oh, my God, really? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, okay. So they're like, all right, you know, go out, get yourself a kilt, and uh, we'll fly you out to Struthers, Ohio for Monday Night Raw. And I was like, all right, cool. But I had no clue what what was going to go on. Uh, was they going to bring me in as the world's biggest Roddy Piper fan or whatever the deal was? I, I had no idea. So I get there, I, I sit down, and they look at me and they go, all right, tonight you're going to be Roddy Piper. Ooh. And I'm kind of <laughs> like, huh? They're like, yep, tonight you're going to be Roddy Piper. I'm like, okay, I guess so. <laughs> so they, uh, they brought me in, and Lala was talking to me, and Lala was like, all right, you know, I'll ask you some questions and everything. Uh, he goes, well, you, you, you kind of resemble Roddy a little bit, you know, except for the haircut, which was, <laughs> don't let me get into that. But uh, <laughs> you do a lot of things stupid when you're young. Um, but... Um, <laughs> He was like, all right, so if I asked you, uh, you know, okay, what about that haircut? What'd you get asked? Would you get a cut at a pet store? Uh, what would your answer be? And I was like, uh, pet store. Uh, yeah, I got a cut at a pet store. I'm making a sequel to How Comes to Frog Town. It's going to be called How Comes to Dog Town, starring my family <laughs> and a couple of my neighbors, if you can believe that. And he was like, all right, yeah, that's good. That works. That works. And so, you know, he was just saying little things back and forth and working out what we were going to say. And then... <laughs> Here he goes, and he's announcing, because they used to, he used to do two or three King's Courts a night. Hey, and um, because of, hey Pat? Yeah, because the show was hey, pretty taped. Hey, I wanted to ask you something real quick uh, before before you continue. Would you okay. mind, and, and Nate, Nate, the same thing too, would you guys mind if I actually played that? Because I actually have that clip from that your your time on King's Court. Did you, did you guys up for hearing it? Oh, I'll, I'll mark out to myself, sure. <laughs> Absolutely, I, th- I think uh, not only uh, myself and Pat, but the listeners would love to hear that clip too, Felix. I found it. I'm more than happy to let everybody hear it. So here we go. Welcome back, everyone, to our Monday Night Raw. And yes, where's the king? The champ. Because that's the kind of treatment that the king is used to getting. And that's the kind of treatment that I am going to get at King of the Ring. Yeah. Because you see, at King of the Ring, I'm going to be facing a guy from Scotland. Exactly. I'm going to be facing a guy that likes to talk like this and shake his hair, you know. One of the all-time greats. Unquestionably a legend. You don't call it a dress. I know that for a fact. Only a true king would have enough guts to have that individual as a guest right here on King's Court. I predict he's going to get beat up right here, right now, and that's the bottom line. My guest this week is from Scotland. Yeah, yeah. And my guest wears a dress. Uh oh. I can't. Bring him out here. Call me for the storm. Can it be? It's gonna break. 
Big Blue Smackdown. Is There's the music. Get ovation. ready. I'm standing. A standing ovation for one of the all-time great. And he's the right. Who? Oh. Lost a little weight there. Who is that? Who is that? I'm not even going to ignore that statement. I know who it is. But... That's not Rowdy Roddy Piper. What? What's Jerry Lawler pulling here? Who does he think he is? Yeah. Talk about cheap imitation. in the gym every day. I'm in the best condition of my life, man. Oh, man. Hey, Hot Rod, wait a minute. What happened to your hair? You used to have that long, stringy hair. Where'd you get that haircut? At a pet store? I got a cut at a pet store. <laughs> it was a special. <laughs> so I said, what the heck? I'm doing a new movie. It's going to be a sequel to Hell Comes to Frogtown. It's going to be called Hell Comes to Dogtown, starring my family <laughs> and a couple of my neighbors. Can you believe that? <laughs> Rowdy Roddy Piper, listen. You were in that movie. Wait a minute. You were in that movie called They Live, weren't you? That's right. And it should have been called... They're dead, or they're dead, because <laughs> every movie I do, collapsed right down the toilet, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do know what you're saying, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Well, how does it feel to be a guest now on the King's Court? Well, you will tell you something, man. I am so excited, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Should I sit down? <laughs> oh, no, wait, come on, stand up. You've been out in California too long. You know? Oh. <laughs> By the way, I wanted to ask you, I, I want to ask you about that, uh, is it called a kilt? <laughs> it's a skirt, man. <laughs> a skirt, okay. We, we're, all, we're all curious. What's under that skirt? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. You don't want to know what's underneath the skirt. <laughs> Come on, what's under there? Uh, nothing, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Hey, I see you're sporting an earring, too, Rowdy One. Uh, when'd you get that? Uh, this is typical Hollywood. I got it right here in town at a local bar and grill. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. Does Mark Shot know you're wearing that? Okay, now listen. I want to ask you, what is going through your feeble mind, Rowdy Roddy Piper, to have the nerve to challenge me at King of the Ring? Do you know what I'm capable of doing to you? I know exactly what you're capable of doing. <laughs> and come to think of it, Jerry... <laughs> I want to back out right now. The I don't want to fight you. It's all these morons out here that want me to get into the ring with you. All these Ohio airheads. And I don't want to fight you. And please, Jerry, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, please. Don't make me fight you. Please, I, I want to back out right now. He wants to back out. Rowdy Roddy Piper wants to back out. Well, what you got to do in order to back out of this match, Rowdy Roddy Piper, is you got to get down on your hands and knees and kiss my royal feet. Is that all right with you? That would be fine. Anything to get out of the match, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Don't get up yet, Rowdy. I want you to crawl on your hands and knees out of this ring, okay? Go ahead. Anything for you, King. You're the king. I think I'm getting <laughs> sick. And Unbelievable. It's just a sample of what he's going to get at King of the Ring. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> that was classic stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. And I know Pat was marking out for himself right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I'm getting sick. Yeah, dig it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that is tremendous, uh, Pat. The thing I, I wanted to want uh, to know about you. You know, you talk about all these great impressions that you can do. When did you discover that you had that talent, and, and do your impressions extend outside the world of pro wrestling? Ah, uh, God! Ever since I was a, a little kid, I, I could basically impersonate anybody. And I, I don't know, man. This, uh, I must have been dumped in my head one too many times because, you know, all these voices <laughs> I could do, I could, I could be like the next Bugs Bunny. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I so, mean, uh, yeah. like, 
like the Macho Man one. I I, I thought they were going to pick the Macho Man one, that but then they ended up picking the Piper one, which worked out better for me anyway. Yeah, yeah, I did. And obviously, this led to the, the King of the, the the King of the Ring matchup. So, take us take us through that day if you recall what happened. You you arrive at the arena. And yeah, you, I arrive at the Baltimore are you, Arena. Are you, are you greeted Got, warmly by the guys? Are they are they rough on you? I mean, what, what's going on? No, no, uh, they they really weren't uh, rough on me. Uh, back to back to Monday Night Raw. Like you know, a couple of guys were, you know, just kind of like giving me like the snub a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Scott Hall was one of them. He was just uh, you know right before I'm walking through the curtain. He's he just kind of looked at me and kind of like. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. So I went through the curtain, did my thing. When I came back, uh, like we talked about before, Men in the Mission was watching the monitor, and they all stood up and they applauded me. And I was like, thank you, thank you. And then uh, Jeff Jarrett ran over to me and he goes, hey, you got that Roddy Piper down. How was it working with Jerry Lawler and everything? And then Scott Hall's like, hey, yo, man, that was pretty good, kid. And I'm just like, all right, enough with the Scarface routine, okay? I, okay, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the guys were were pretty good. Um, nobody really messed with me except Shawn Michaels. <laughs> uh, so I, I get to the Baltimore Arena, and I'm waiting on Roddy. And like I said before, I'm like, I, I don't know if this guy's pissed off. I don't know if he's going to kick my ass. I don't know what he's going to do because – you know, I mean, you, you see a guy on TV smashing somebody with a coconut, and then I'm like, okay, what's he going to do to me? <laughs> you know, so I, I I had no clue what to expect. So I get into the Baltimore arena. I'm waiting in the corner, waiting on Roddy, and Shawn Michaels comes running up to me. And he's like, hey, kid, Roddy's looking for you. Hey, he's pissed. See you later. He takes off. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. Great, great, great. <laughs> So then, finally, Roddy comes in, and I'm standing in the corner, and I'm a bundle of nerves, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and here comes Shawn Michaels again. I'm like, oh, here we go. Puts his arm around Roddy, looks at Roddy, looks at me, points to me, and then that's when Roddy comes over, and he's like, oh, there you are, kid. <laughs> Great impersonation of me, huh? Where'd you do some time with you, huh? I was just like, hey, hi, how are you? How you doing? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was interesting, to say the least. But I, like I said, I I had no clue what was going to happen. Like I, I was like, oh my god, is he is he mad and everything? And then uh, it, it's funny that you uh, you just played the the clip of the King's Court because I was uh, Roddy was cutting a promo for Coliseum Video, and that's that's the promo that he dubbed me the brat. And as he was doing that, I'm sitting there, and I'm talking to his friend and everything, and I was like, so, uh, I take it Roddy saw the videotape, and he's, he's laughing. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what did he say? And he goes, well, he watched the tape, stopped it, rewound it, Watched it again, stopped it, got out of his chair, and now I am quoting what this guy said that Roddy said. And please excuse my language, but he got out of his chair, and he was like, that little motherfucker, I'm going to kill him, man. (laughs) (laughs) I heard that, and I'm like, oh, great. (laughs) But Roddy, Roddy, oh, my God, like seeing him on TV and then meeting him, Face to face, and you know, talking to him person to person. Uh, the, the guy was such a oh my god, he was such a sweetheart. He was so down to earth, and like he, he treated you like you were you know you were his best friend, and he, he'd known you for years. You know, mm-hmm. just an all around incredible guy. Well, obviously Roddy enjoyed your impression, and he, he loved what you did. You know, but were there some people that uh, weren't? too kind or didn't have quite the same sense of humor that Hot Rod did when it came to your various impressions? No, actually, uh, everyone was pretty cool. Like I said, I mean, I, I might have got a few looks here and there, and, uh, you know, uh, these guys have been struggling to get up the, 
the ladder all the years in their life, and, you know, here I come walking in the door, and I'm, like, putting the main event. So mm-hmm. I can understand where, you know, I might get some dirty looks, but nobody, nobody really messed with me. Well, with the exception of Shawn Michaels, but that was all in fun. But back then, yeah, you know, but I, I also was, heard that he, he's been known to be a douchebag too. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean, yeah, I've yeah. heard he's been known to be one. So, yeah, well, I mean, like I said, he, he really just—he he was screwing around at fun, but but other than that, uh, no, nobody. Just like I said, I mean, a few dirty looks, but nothing to get your panties in a twist about. <laughs> So as we go into the uh, to the King of the Ring, uh, how did that whole thing come about? And and there was a little twist in there. You were you were obviously impersonating Roddy, and then come to, come to find out you actually turn on the King and, and side with Roddy. Right. Um, well, what happened with that was, uh, you know, I did the the uh, Monday Night Raw King's Court. <clears throat> And they give me a call back, and they were like, uh, well, did you see yourself on Monday Night Raw? And I was like, yes, thank you so much for the opportunity. Hope Roddy wasn't too mad about it. And they're like, well, maybe you can ask him in person. Would you like to go to the King, King of the Ring? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I didn't know, once again, what was going to happen until the day I got there. And at first, they were going to have me come out. You know, Lawler was going to be in the ring. And they were going to have me come out, and they were going to pretend I was Roddy Piper again. This was, this was the original plan, that I was supposed to come out, and, you know, they'd be like, Rowdy, Roddy Piper, and then, you know, the bagpipers would lead me to the ring, and then I'd come out, and, you know, everyone would probably be booing me out of the building, but then I was supposed to grab the mic and say, you know, Jerry Lawler, I've said some things I shouldn't have said, I did some things I shouldn't have done, but tonight, now you've got to pay the piper, and then I was going to introduce Roddy. Oh. So okay. that would have been interesting, but that all changed at the last minute, and... Uh, they were just like, all right, you know, Roddy's going to come out, and then, bang, kid, you come out, you come out. But uh, but the, the whole time, Roddy's like, you know, cave-aving everything. He's just like, you know, you know, if Lawless sees you in the ring with me, you know, he's going to be pissed, so I want you to get out. And, you know, I understood why he was doing that, because, you know, he's, like I said, very protective of the business. But, uh, you know, but he, he wasn't letting on that, you know, this this whole thing was a work. You know, he was like, all right, you know, like, you could get hurt in there, and which is true, I could have. But, you know, he wasn't letting me in, like, you know, he, he was just like, all right, man, this is a fight, this is a fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, speaking of the business, Pat, before we get any further and, and talk about your exploits in this crazy world of pro wrestling, I want to take it back a couple steps and go back to when you were just a, just a fan who were some of the guys that you enjoyed watching when, when you were growing up uh, being a wrestling fan? You know, it's so funny, because when I first started watching wrestling, I was a, I was a big babyface mark. I used to love Tito Santana when he was, when mm. he was the Intercontinental Champion. Huge, huge snooker fan. And then, mm. uh, and actually, when, when Roddy hit him in the head with the coconut... I bawled my eyes out like a baby. Oh. <laughs> As I'm and, sure a lot of the young fans did back then. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? At that point, I hated him. I hated Roddy Piper. Then, then the strangest thing happened. Like, I started watching him more and more and watching his, you know, promos and everything. I was like, wow, this guy's kind of cool. And then all of a sudden, I started hating the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Piper became my favorite. It was the strangest thing. Like I used to, I used to take the uh, the picnic table cloth off the table and you know wrap it around my waist, pretending I was Roddy Piper. I looked stupid, but then again, so did my hair cut that. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it was just it was incredible just to, to to meet a legend and somebody that you grew up admiring. Sure. Now, I wanted to ask my in this case. You actually once you once you actually parted ways with WWE and you went about getting into the uh, independent circuit, you actually yeah. created a character of your own, and you kind of talked about it briefly as you were discussing this because you obviously named you were you were given the name the Brat, but uh, right. 
tell us what happened after you parted ways with WWE and uh, how you came about to being into the uh, in, in the independent circuit where you, believe it or not, you actually, uh, you had mentioned this too, that, well, at least you did, uh, that you came in contact again with a lot of the former rivals, well, two that I can tell you are out the bat, uh, of, of Roddy, that uh, Gary Lawler and uh, Snuka came face-to-face yes. with them again on the Indies. So tell us about that. Well, um, after the the King of the Ring, I really didn't do anything for probably like two years. And then there was this uh, promoter in the local area Excuse me. And, um, you know, I, me and my friend approached him and, you know, uh, like, hey, this, this is the Piper impersonator. And, uh, you know, I wanted to do I wanted to do what Roddy started out to do when he first came to the WWE. I wanted to be a manager. Mm. And when, when Piper first came to uh, World Wrestling Federation, World Wrestling Entertainment, whatever you want to call it. Um, when he first came, as you remember, he was managing Dr. D, David Schultz, and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Well, I wanted to do the same thing in the independents. So uh, this one promoter said, all right, well, you know, I'll, I'll give him a shot. And the first person he brings in is Jimmy Snuka. <laughs> so... We did the whole thing, you know, with the bananas and the pineapples and the coconut. I, I never got a, actually a chance to hit him with the coconut. But I'll tell you, uh, man, I, it was only supposed to be like a, it, it was a tryout thing. He was just, he was just like, all right, let, let's see what he can do. So, you know, mm-hmm. it was basically like a three-day run. And then after I had my little thing with Snooka, he was like, all right, what else can you do? I was like, well, pff, who else can you get? <laughs> so <laughs> with the Snooka thing, oh, my God. Uh we carry that thing on for probably like six months. I've taken that leap off the top rope more times than I can count. And, you know, it's so much different watching it on TV than sitting there, you're lying on the mat, you're looking up, there's Superfly Jimmy Snooker, and I'm lying there on the, on the mat like an idiot, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> Little skinny me and big Jimmy Snooker coming down. And there was one time, there was actually a, a video that I, I posted on YouTube, uh, and it's like a, a, a music montage video, and then at the end there's a there's a Pat's Pit uh, with uh, the Highlanders and Chris Candido, and um, yeah, but in that video, Snooker comes off the top rope, and as I sit up, I kind of turned, and Jimmy hit me, and my elbow went into my ribs, and he broke two of my ribs. Mm. Yeah. So then I ended up going to the hospital. I'm like, what were you doing? I was like, Jimmy Snooker broke my ribs. Ain't it cool? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, look at the size of you. Stay out of the ring. I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So yeah, I've been, been in the, the ring before. Back. Yes, that? That, that's exactly where I was going to go with that, Felix, because, uh, you know, every good wrestler, every good heel, every good manager has to have some type of following. And so, uh, you know, we got to talk about the, the Brat Pack, the Rat Pack. Yeah, the, well, the, the I mean, I was, always a, I was always a huge fan of stables, like, you know, the Four Horsemen, the Dangerous Alliance, uh, you know, the, the list goes on and on. So I wanted my own stable. So... Um, before they got signed to the WWE, uh, this promoter brought in the Highlanders, and I wasn't even supposed to manage them that night. I was supposed to manage some other team. And then, you know, they're like, oh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Rory. Hey, I'm Robbie. I had no clue what their gimmick was, and all of a sudden I see them pulling kilts out of their bags. <laughs> so I walk over to the promoter, and I go, why are you putting me with these guys? Why don't you put me with these guys? He's like, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll put you with these guys. And I was like, all right, good. So... Met the Highlanders, and we immediately hit it off. And then he was bringing in uh, the late, great, no gimmicks needed Chris Candido. So he brought in Chris Candido, and Chris Candido became our, our champion of the organization. So he put him with us also. Uh, then we'd have, like, members come in and out, and they'd do, like, you know, because they couldn't always be around, that they'd have other places to go to. But uh, I had uh, Kenny Phoenix. Now, before he was rah, rah, shish, boom, bah in the WWE, he was with me. 
<laughs> that but, being uh, Kenny yeah, Dollar, I mean, right? all great guys, too. But uh, there was other yeah, times. We, we've uh, had on the program. Who, yeah, Kenny? Kenny Don, we had it. Yeah, yeah we had great Kenny kid. Yeah. yeah, he's a great guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Got a funny story to tell you about this. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Go ahead. Oh, man, I got into a lot of trouble for this. All right. Uh-oh. Uh, you, you remember <laughs> Zach Gowan? Yeah. 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 Zach Gowan. Well, <laughs> they bring in Zach Gowan, and I'm like, all right. So I'm, I'm basically in the organization. I'm the big heel, you know. And any time they brought in, brought on a star, they'd have him in Pat's pit, and then bang, it was off to the main event. And basically, at the end of the night, I'd get the crap knocked out of me. And that's what the fans wanted to see, and that's what happened. And like I said, boom. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> They bring in Zach Gowan. I'm like, all right, all right, let's let's uh, let's see. We're bringing in Zach Gowan. So prior to that, I had bought one of those uh, those WWE championship foam belts, <laughs> and I spray-painted it black. And in the middle, there was a, like a round circle. It was like the, it was like the Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, the, the belt that he was holding. Not the, not the Scream and Skull belt, but... The other one that was round almost looked like a globe. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those belts. I spray painted the middle blue, spray painted the sides blue, <laughs> and I stuck a big handicap sticker right in the middle. Oh. <laughs> like the ones that you see in the, 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 the men's room doors and the, the ladies' room oh, doors. Oh, man. <laughs> handicap accessible, yeah. <laughs> so I bring him into the ring, and I was like, you know something, uh, Zach, I'm sorry you know, I want to apologize for the actions of my father, and I, I, I got a present for you. I, I just, I just want to, you know, bury the hatchet. I just want to put this all behind us. <laughs> He's like, oh, thank you. He had no clue I was going to do this. <laughs> I pull out the championship belt and hand it to him, <laughs> and he's like, how dare you? <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So then I'm managing Kenny Dones that night. Kenny comes to the ring wearing the belt. Oh, no. <laughs> he gets into the ring, and I do a Pat's Pit with Kenny, and Kenny's pretending to be Zach. And then, oh, God no. forgive us, but <laughs> Kenny was like, <laughs> Kenny was like, thank you very much for having me on your Pat's Pit. <laughs> <laughs> I got oh, backstage. Man. Oh my God! The promoter's girlfriend was pissed. <laughs> she goes, "I want these two out of here." I go, "What? It was funny." I go, "I thought it was funny. <laughs> the, the fans thought it was funny." Okay, Zach might be a little upset, but I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrestling. Yeah. Sure. I mean, come on, how serious are you going to be about it? <laughs> but later on, I asked Zach, and he, he was like, nah, man, I'm cool with it. I was like, all right. And then at the end of the night, he ended up busting me over the head with the handicap sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dude, he, he didn't hold back either, so he might have been a little pissed, because that thing caved in around my head. <laughs> that's, that's what's yeah. so great about it, and I think people... Well, people said this uh, and expressed this about Roddy uh, after he had passed that, you know, he had that uncanny ability to to make you hate him so much because he was so great at his job. And I think, man, that like that's an, a compliment to what you do. Like if you can piss people off legitimately, then you're doing your job. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've had I've had people waiting on me in the parking lot. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh yeah, walking out to my car and they're like, "All right, talk some crap now." <laughs> oh wow! Surrounded wow. by people. Ooh. And I'm like, "Oh, here we go." <laughs> <laughs> That's oh man! But Jay, you definitely you, you you just like Nate was saying, you definitely uh you know how to get heat, and that's definitely a good thing. And you know, you also. One thing that I actually was curious about it was that because you, you talked about Jimmy, 
is that you actually got to confront Jerry after a couple of years and, and then turning on him and obviously and all that stuff. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned that you gave him the bird right in the ring. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cause, How did that uh, come to get to meet King again? Well, like I said, uh, the promoter, uh, he actually, he was kind of a pain in the ass to work for. But uh, bottom line is, you know, he, he brought me in. I was his, I was his top star, he'd, he'd, and I wasn't even a wrestler. But you know, he just he'd let me do basically whatever I want. Um, you know, there, there was times I would I would do uh, tag matches. Uh, you know, but I'd, you know it'd be like a handicap match, and you know my guys would tag me in. I'd give a couple quick punches and then tag right back out, or give a couple quick kicks and then tag back out, and then finally the guys would get a hold of me and that would be it. But uh, yeah, they. they would basically let me do whatever I wanted, and they wanted to bring in people that, you know, Roddy had feuded with, and Jerry Lawler was one of them. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. I go, because now I'm the bad guy, and Jerry's the good guy. So I got into the ring, and I, you know, I was just basically, (laughs) I was trash talking, doing a lot of trash talking to Jerry. And Jerry's like, can I have the microphone now? I was like, no, I got the floor. (laughs) <laughs> Jerry's just looking at me like, all right, all right. But, yeah, we did uh, two or three shows with Jerry. And uh, one night, actually, it was Jerry Lawler and oh, Fred Curry the uh, third, And they were fighting Dangerous Danny Davis and Chris Candido. And I was managing them. And... Uh, Sonny was along ringside with us. So at the end of the, the night, Jerry picks up DeVito, pile drives him, picks up Sonny, pile drives her, picks up uh, no gimmicks needed Chris Candido, pile drives him, pins him. I'm pissed off because my guys just lost the match. So I go storming back through the curtain, and as I'm going back through the curtain, Jerry Lawler is on the second rope, and he looks at Fred Curry, and he goes, get him, get him, get him, get him. So I walk through the curtains, and I'm like, ah, thank God that's over with. Fred comes through the curtain, grabs me by the back of the head. He goes, come with me. I go, where are we going? He goes, back to the ring. I go, what the hell for? And I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> so he, he throws me back into the ring. Jerry grabs me, picks me up, gives me the pile driver. And it, it's hard to describe what happened, but like if I have video footage somewhere, I just got to have to find it. But uh, when I went down, instead of like immediately just bouncing backwards, my legs went forward, like to where my head was. I, I folded up like an accordion, and then I bounced back and out an overlaller. But it, it looked like I legitimately broke my back. So I get carried back to the ring, and uh, Tony Roy, I don't know if that name's familiar to the, you guys, he was, um, he was from, uh, from the New England area. He was one of the guys who trained Triple H. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, he was, he was backstage, and he goes, Pat, he goes, you all right? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm fine, why? He goes, holy sh- you, dude, he goes, you got to watch that footage. So they rewound the tape, and, I mean, it looked like I broke my back. I was like, oh, wow. I was like, if we had a stretcher there, that would have been great. <laughs> now, do you currently? Uh, now, let me rephrase that. You know, with the WWE Network, there's a big, big thing going on. Obviously, with getting to having the fans get reintroduced to a lot of the past uh, things that have occurred that, that myself and me obviously were privileged enough to watch as youngsters. Uh-huh. Do you get approached now? Some twenty years later, you're like, "Oh, I remember seeing you on the WWE Network. You were that guy, that that, that Roddy Piper guy." Did you, I mean, do you get approached and still get remembered for doing that? Uh, not as much as when it first happened, but like every once in a blue moon, people will come up and be like, "Hey, I, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they they've seen me at you know uh, local shows and everything. They'll be like, "Oh, Pat the Brad Piper." I'm like, "Yep, that's me." <laughs> <laughs> Man, I mean, 
it's it's just a fascinating story, Pat. And and I wonder, obviously excluding Roddy and, and maybe even excluding Jerry Lawler, who has been the person or people that that you had the most fun working with in, in pro wrestling? Because it just sounds like this whole thing has been a crazy ride. Uh, well, I I have to say one of them was definitely Chris Candido. Mm. He was oh my god, he was always like a the prankster. Like he'd, he'd I really don't be, think he gets the credit he deserves, to be honest. He was so absolutely. underutilized. He was such a great talent. He really was. I mean, I mean but, you know, he'd always be joking around. Like, I, I, I was sitting there, you know, I'd just be talking to some of the boys and everything. And, you know, someone would come up and, you know, grab what little tush I have. <laughs> and I, I turn around and I'm like, what the hell? And, oh, it's Chris. <laughs> 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 but there was, a, there was a time that, uh, <laughs> We're all backstage, and I got my bag of I got you know I'm I'm gonna do a pit with Snook. I, I got my bag of coconuts, I got my bag with pineapples, I got my bag with the bananas. And I was like, all right. So um, the promoter wanted to talk to me, and so I left the dressing room. Well, all the boys and Sonny are back there, and they're all they're rifling through my bag. And Sonny was like, oh, a pineapple. I love pineapples. So my friend Joe was like, oh, I got a knife. <laughs> so I'm out talking to the promoter. They're sitting there cutting up my pineapple and having a feast. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, wow. then, then they're like, all right, all right, you know, Pat the Pip's next. I'm like, all right. So I walk into the dressing room. And then all of a sudden I see, like, Sonny kicking uh, – napkins under the table like, what the hell's going on and i walk in and everyone's laughing i go what? i go what's going on everyone's like nothing i was like all right all right i gotta go i gotta get ready for the pit so i pick up the bag and what they had done is they had cut off the top of the pineapple you know the brushy part and they stuck it back in the bag so i, I think it's still in the bag <laughs> okay. so i'm like all right so i pick it up it's just the top of the pineapple. And I, I was like, what the hell? And I'm looking around, and everyone's laughing. And I look at everybody, and I go, you, you guys. I go, I got a pit. I got a pit in a couple of minutes, and you, you, you ate my pineapple, you pack of bastards. What the hell? <laughs> they all started laughing. And I'm like, all right, fine, forget it, forget it, forget it. You know what, forget it. I'll just, I'll do I was like, I'm not talking to anybody for the rest of the night. <laughs> I was the <pissed. laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and that was the same night well, that uh, Snooker was in the ring with Candido, and you know I was doing the whole pineapple, and well, I didn't have the pineapple. I was doing the whole bananas and the coconuts, and <laughs> Jimmy hit hit Candido in the forehead, and Candido took a bump on the banana, like you know, like slipped on the banana, and then it squashed all over the ring. And I was like, great. And so the, Promoters yelling at me, yeah, Candido bumped in a banana, and now i got to clean up the ring, you stupid jerk. I was <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but Chris now, was a lot of fun. Now, so in your opinion... Too. I mean, we, what's that? No, I was just going to ask, in your opinion, and Nate and I have obviously talked about this many times over the last several months, do you feel WWE honored Roddy? The way they should have? No. Why is that? Why is that? Absolutely not. I mean, come on. He was one of the guys who put WrestleMania on the map. He made WrestleMania. Him and Hogan. Yep. Sure. I mean, if it wasn't for those two, okay, you know, there might have been a WrestleMania. Would it have been as good? Probably not. Hmm. But the thing is, I think, I mean, they paid, I think they paid Dusty Rhodes. You know, no offense against Dusty. But I think they paid Dusty Rhodes a better tribute than they did Roddy. And Roddy was yeah. the one that helped them get to where they are today. Okay. So yeah. when, they, when they paid that little, that little tribute, I mean, I, I think they showed it once on SmackDown and once on Raw, you know, a little tribute. I mean, they could have had people talking in between or showing clips in between matches of Roddy. They yeah. didn't do it. And it, I hate to say it, but I mean, look at the tribute that they gave to Benoit. Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Seriously. They, they, they gave him the whole the whole show. That's what I'm saying. The whole show, and then I guess midway through the through the show, they found out exactly what happened, and then they started right. toning down. But I mean, they could have done that with Roddy. So, so why do you think they didn't? Because obviously, I, like you said, Roddy is somebody that is so important to this company, like him and Hogan and the whole rock and wrestling thing. That put WWF on the map back in the day. Right. And I, like I said, I mean, once I saw that tribute, they're like, yeah, we're going to be celebrating the life of Rowdy Roddy Piper tonight. And I'm like, really? I was like, with that? I was like, that's it? I was pissed. So, I mean, I went on my page and like my Facebook page and I was trying to post something every day for him because, I mean, I respected the man and, you know, I just thought, I just thought it was an injustice for him. I, I, I think he should, he deserved more than that. Well, you know, I got to throw out there a quick shout out because here's the thing. I was, I was not even aware that you had even existed that was still around after that. I didn't know. I did not know what happened to you uh, since I'd seen you 20 years ago. And I got to throw your buddy, Jay DeChillis, a shout out because he's the one that kept this up. Yes, thank you, Jay. Thank you so you. much. I, I know you're probably listening. Thank you so much, brother. <laughs> he, he's the one that told me, he said, you know, I got that guy that imitated, that did the, the, the impersonation of Roddy. And I said, really? Oh, I bet he's got a hell of a story to tell. And lo and behold, here we are. So. Multiple stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and the thing, the thing that pisses me off about, you know, uh, you know, the people remembering me or not, people think I'm Jason Sensation. Oh. Hey, you know, yes, yes. I was going to say, people confuse you with that other guy because he did all the impressions too. And most yeah, notably, he was, he was the, heart the, the heart family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I mean, I know I got a big nose like Owen, but no, that was not me. That was Jason <laughs> Sensation. <laughs> how, how did, how, in the crazy world of wrestling, how did you guys never have a feud? For me and Jason? Yeah. 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 I would have kicked his ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I would have slapped the sleeper on him and said, good night, doing the impersonation now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm not uh, actually surprised. Um, although, you know, there, there was times I uh, I would feud with, you know, people like my size. I mean, I've, I've fought midgets before. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, guys, uh, we, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. I have to step away for just a minute, okay? Okay, no, no problem. Go go ahead, Pat. Uh, there, there was one time, right? We were doing the show, and I was managing this guy, Nick the Hippie Freak Richards. Uh-huh. And, you know, he, you know, basically a guy come out all in tie-dye and everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, anyway, I... Uh, I was interviewing um, Bill Alfonso. Okay. So Bill Alfonso comes out, and, you know, we're basically the same size, you know, two skinny little guys. And we're in the ring and everything. And then my buddy Nick comes out, and, you know, we start pushing around Alfonso. Then all of a sudden you hear, enter Sandman. So here comes the (laughs) Sandman down. Now, he had been drinking in the parking lot. The whole afternoon. Oh, no. He gets into the ring, and, you know, <laughs> he's three <laughs> sheets. He's three sheets, right? And I'm like, oh, here we go. So he goes, all right. He goes, let's make this a hardcore, <laughs> no disqualifications, false counts anywhere. Looks at me and goes, Tag team match. <laughs> I go, what? This was unplanned. Oh, no. <laughs> so I grab the microphone. I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I go, I am a manager. I'm not a wrestler. He goes, I said, I am not going to be in this match. And he's like, nope, that's the way it's going to be. That's it. And that's that. And he walks off. Oh, man. So I go back to the promoter. I go, Hey, you know what this big drunken hey. jerk just said? <laughs> hey, guys. And then hey he guys. goes, yeah. Yo, 
Yeah, I didn't didn't mean to interrupt the story, but Pat, I've got a very, very big surprise for you. Okay. And I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do it. No, No. I actually got somebody a blast from your past. Okay. I was able to catch, and let's see if you remember who this is. Okay, you're on with Pat Piper. Hey, Pat, man, how you doing? Okay, I'm trying to keep talking. I'm trying to figure out the voice. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, um, uh, the man got appeal just like the Pied Piper. First name Pat, last name Piper. Say it like this. Oh, yes, you get Shrouty. He was the man who intimidated Rowdy. You know who it is, man? How you doing, brother? <laughs> I'm all right, baby. How you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Oh God! I haven't seen you guys. Well, I saw you guys a couple of years ago at the uh, New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. No, well, I, okay. You were at the I mean, you were at the Hall of Fame. Why you didn't come up and say something? Because I didn't I was know gonna, you were but there. you guys are busy and stuff. You know, I didn't want to disturb you, but that's awesome. Oh uh, well, nah. See, you one of the boys from back in the day, so you wouldn't have been disturbing me. It's always welcome <laughs> to see one of the fellas. <laughs> Uh, so how you been, man? I've been all right. I gotta tell you, man. You they didn't. It wasn't, it wasn't for very long, but what you did. I mean, you used to crack me up. I mean, I used to watch you on the monitors just to crack, just just to get a laugh. I used to drop. I used to drop what I was doing when I knew you was getting ready to put that skirt on and that T-shirt and go out there, and I mean, you used to have, you were funnier than Piper, you to the lucky, God rest his soul, but you was funnier than, you was funnier than Roddy Roddy Piper, to me. <laughs> oh, that's a compliment, man, I appreciate that so much, wow, this is great. <laughs> oh, I figured you'd get a kick out of that, because they were definitely big fans of yours, I know Sir Mo uh, didn't catch him, but he definitely wanted to kind of say hello to you, but, uh, I knew that I these guys that. are big fans of yours, and they definitely wanted to lend, show their support and appreciate what you did. I know Oscar and, and Sir Mo and Mimi were, and I were talking about it on, on their show, so I wanted to make it happen. So we, we definitely dude, got that's on here awesome. And, uh, Thank you so much for calling in, dude. That's great. Now, what, what, what are you doing these days? Uh, what are you doing these days, Pat? Uh, I pretty much uh, hung up the kilt. I don't know. I must have pissed off somebody because, <laughs> like, no, uh, nobody's like getting in contact with me or anything. And I'm just like, you know, guys, I'm available. Hey, Piper kid. No, where are you living at nowadays? What's that? Where do you live now? I live in Massachusetts. What part of Massachusetts? A uh, small suburb town called Weymouth. Now, how far is that from the Boston area? Oh, that's only uh, it's only a few towns, man. All right. What you doing on Thursday? Oh, Thursday I'm night. Uh, I gotta work. I work nights, unfortunately. All right. Um. No, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying because I'm I'm shooting um I'm shooting not your mama's TV. Uh, Ma, I got a podcast, uh, Not Your Mama's Radio, but I'm actually still shooting Not Your Mama's TV in, um, what was it, man, Melrose, um, on Thursday. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Massachusetts. Huh. I'll have to get you my number. There you go. All right, I'm going to have Felix text the number. Um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna be in Wakefield, um, in the morning tomorrow. I will call you when I get there. Uh, if you work nice, you probably, yeah, you probably can meet us for lunch or something, but I'm going to see if you can work that out. Cause matter of fact, I'm shooting it Thursday and then I'm shooting on Monday too. Cause I'm going to Monday night raw in Boston Monday night. So right. yeah, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be out. It's funny you call it now because I'm going to be out your way, dog, so we can get together. Uh, that sounds like a plan, my man. All right. We want pictures. <laughs> you, we want pictures. We want pictures. Uh, <laughs> We will, we will want pictures of you, Felix, when you wasting away, uh, and there's not too much of you left <laughs> to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I think Felix can fit in the kilt, kilt now. Yeah, he can fit in the kilt. I know. Oh, yeah. Felix is like the invisible man. 
<laughs> he done took that to him, and now he just raped it away. <laughs> but see, what he did with I don't know. Felix post on Facebook, he got a car transformation and doing squats and running eight miles. None of that's true. Felix was on a crack <laughs> diet. Felix, the first Felix that got a hold, he done got a hold of that shit. <laughs> he done lost, he done lost a lot. A hundred fifty pounds, and he was doing hand jobs in the alley. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, if you see, if you see Felix now, and 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 you look at you look at the uh, you look at the the video for him at Lucha Underground where me and him was struggling because we couldn't fit in them seats. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the same dude. Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't bring that up. <laughs> yeah, see, I mean, no, I had to help him. I had to, I had to squeeze him out, out of the seat. Then he had to, had to turn around and do the same thing for me. <laughs> and now, yeah, now he's walking around in size thirty-two jeans and wearing two X shirts. <laughs> That's a crackhead move. Yeah, all the exercise in the world, and he ain't been for the rules no weight like that in six months. I oh, you doing crack. Go ahead, folks. Come clean over here, brother. We're going to get to the rehab. So, Felix, uh, do, do, no. is this a wellness violation, Felix? Are you violating our wellness policy here? Oh, shit. Let's not get that started now. We're going to let him lose some more weight, but we're going to see him get him the help he needs. <laughs> well, truth be told, all our fat asses need to pick the pipe up because we're going to do for Felix. <laughs> that damn crack is a beautiful thing. <laughs> uh, you, you can lose. I mean, you look at it this way: they come down to a just say no to drugs and no to crack, right? You can lose a hundred pounds a month. You can get your lawn mower for five dollars and a TV set flat screen for twenty eight fifty. That and y'all want to get rid of crack? I say give us more. Wow. wow. <laughs> It's helping the economy. Tell me, tell me, oh, you yeah. think? You're not. No, I could be the poster boy. Look at the size of me. You know, we, we used to have a we used to have a whole set in New York. It used to be the sex was free because the crack cost money. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me let y'all go. Y'all know y'all doing an interview. Y'all ain't gonna see me jacking the show, but um. Pat, no, no, no. Get my number. Give me a call. If I don't hear from you, I'm going to talk about your ass. And <laughs> Phil, oh, no. Phil, just say hey, no, hey. brother. Just say, well, lose are 75 more pounds, and then we're going to take you to the rehab. Uh, you and Sonny. Y'all, y'all both going to be oh, going to the Oh, shit. No, you didn't just go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to send you. We're going to hook you up. Well, now we don't need, no need to hook you up with Sonny. Then you have to be in jail. What <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, y'all take it easy. All right, All right thank you for coming, fellas. Oh, right. man. <laughs> you just opened up a can of worms. Oh, That's man. okay. Hey, where, where do we go from there, Felix? You know, that's a very good question. But I will <laughs> say this. Pat, let me ask you a question now. Do you actually follow the current product right now? Uh, I follow it, but I'm not into it as much as I used to be. Because I mean, back in the day, you could ask me a question like, "Oh, who held this title at this time?" and I'd be like, "Oh yeah, so and so." Now I'm just kind of like. The reason I ask. The reason I ask is, I mean, as far as like you know, you know who certain stars are. You know, obviously who Seth Rollins is, or Kane, yeah. or or yeah. you know, BDC. Now, somewhere down the line, I definitely want to bring you in to do one of our preview shows that we do of the pay per views and, and and just kind of. Okay. You know, you, you, and we'll tell you some of the matches, and you, you, you give us some of your thoughts. I think you'd be good for, you know, good for to join us to be one of our panelists in the future. Uh, one of our future uh, preview shows that we do, whether it be Survivor Series or or the Royal Rumble or something. So, yeah, we definitely want you back. We definitely want you back. Now, if fans want to keep up with what you're doing, I know yep. you have a Facebook. Do you have any other social media out there? No, no, it's it's basically just the Facebook. And how do they reach you on Facebook? Do they just look up uh, Pat Piper, Pat the Brad? Yeah, Pat What's Piper that? on Facebook, and uh, you should see my stupid face pop up. 
<laughs> but um, it has been an incredible hour, a little over an hour, well, about an hour, and an incredible story to be told. And I knew, if anything, I knew that the listeners would get a kick, a kick out of it as much as I did. I know when we did, well, I hope they enjoyed it as much as I have. And I think everybody enjoyed it, and I think a nice little surprise was definitely have an Oscar on to, to, to tell you how he felt. Oh, that, he that was great. That was great. I, I can't that. thank you enough for that. Oh, no problem. Maybe you'll be on his show before you know it. Oh, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> if he has anything to say about it. But, uh, yeah, we definitely uh, want you back, Pat. Uh, I'll be in touch with you. And maybe hey, Jeff, I have a word for Pat. Yeah, I was going to say, go if, 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 if uh, Pat doesn't mind, I, I do have one final request, if you don't mind, brother. Please. Go ahead. Please, go ahead. Could you just uh, say in, in the way that only you can that this is Pat the Brad Piper and you're listening to Pipe Bomb Radio? Sure thing. For those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Pat the Brat Piper. I am the legendary son of the legendary Rowdy, Rowdy Piper, and you are listening to Pipe Bomb Radio. Let's get Rowdy. Oh, right. Excellent. Good Thank stuff. you, sir. No problem, right. brother. If I had my applause meter, I'd be going right now. Woo! All right. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. But, um, Pat, it's been an honor, man. I'm, I'm glad that we were able to finally make this happen. I hope you had fun because I know we did. Oh, I definitely did. It was, I, it's a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you so much. All right, man. Get Thank some you, rest. Pat. Get some rest. Okay, brother. All right. Take care. You too. All right. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Pat the Brat. Now you got the tongue twist a bit. Pat the Brat Piper. See, y'all got picked on me. Y'all knocked me for a loop there. So, you know. Anyways. No, it's all in good fun. All in good fun. I was going to say, Felix, I, I do have a question for you, though, because Pat was excellent. That was a ton of fun. But uh, yeah. now I think we need to get serious, sir. And, and I don't know how you want to handle right. HR. I don't know how you want to handle HR things on Pipe Bomb Radio. I don't know if you want to <laughs> do it behind Behind closed doors, like most companies are out in the open, like they oh did on Raw. God. But so we need to talk about this 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 substance abuse problem, Felix, because if the people care, man, the people care about you. Oh my God, no! You know what? <laughs> there is no truth to that. I have never. Oh. I, can't, I can't lie. I I can't say that I have never. I have in my youth experimented, <laughs> but who hasn't? But when Youthful it comes to weight loss. Exactly. When it comes to the weight loss, it's 100% hard work and dedication and strict diet. And, you know, and just like any other person on the face of the earth, I'm human. Be- I'm a human being. I will make mistakes. I have stumbled. I have fumbled. But the difference between me and other people is that I that don't try is that I keep going. And even, even in the face of adversity and, and uncertainty, because I begin to doubt myself. And you know what? I can't let that happen. And I do, you know, like I said, I get in my own head and I start to doubt myself and I, and I stop that. You know, I, I, I have so much support. It's pretty overwhelming to know that many people support what I'm doing. So all joking aside, I know Oscar and Mimi and, and Sir Mo are big supporters of what I'm doing. And even the, even the Pipe Bombs radio family, they all are very supportive along with many, many others. And it's impressive to see how many people have been watching my progress. And I had no idea how many people had been, but I guess I'm starting to realize it. But, uh, yeah, you know, that being said, we were going to go ahead and transition into Monday Night Raw. And you hit the nail on the head. Do we, because do we to have to? Topic. <laughs> no, I know. I, we don't have to. But we, it, I know that's going to kind of lead into other things and and we might even be we we might even get joined by our favorite annoying little parrot that comes to calls in every now and then. But yes. uh, speaking of HR problems, hello. You know, um, <laughs> but uh the theme of the night definitely was what is up with Kane? The split personality the mind games that he's been doing with Seth Rollins, it's it's interesting yet it's kind of having me scratch in my head, is this the way he's going to end his career? People have actually thrown out different possible scenarios. Now, that is the main reason of the, the, the main topic that's gone on on Raw, and I guess we could, if, we, if there's anywhere to start, obviously it would be best to start at the top. And for that, I will go ahead and bring on our annoying favorite little parrot. How you doing, Austin? 
I'm doing just phenomenal, guys. How about you? I'm doing excellent. Did you listen to the show? Yes, I listen to the show. Incredible. Oh, my God. You guys are always on top of things. Ten stars. Really? Ten you think of Pat? stars. Absolutely. You, you enjoy Pat's That's story? great. Such a positive guy and a person I would want to be working alongside myself every single day. Just like <laughs> you two, Nate and Felix, two great guys. Okay, what's wrong with this picture, Nate? I was saying, what, what, who are you and what have you done with Austin? That's what I was going to say. You're speaking to Austin, Austin James. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just checking, just checking. Happy but to be here, guys. What is, what's going on with Kane and, 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 and your boy? Kane gone demented again? Is he guys? Is he, is he a split personality? What's your you, you got no, the inside right. scoop, man? What's going on with that? Kane is doing just fine. You know, I seen him this morning drinking some Java, like we say. You know, some coffee, and he's just <laughs> just going on, just perfect, perfect guy, awesome. And I mean, you see him in his job. He is phenomenal, great with kids. You should see him in the Be a Star uh, campaign. Uh, days, you know, when they do the thing at the school, and he is just great with the kids. Great. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I I, I want to believe it or if I'm a little dumbfounded that maybe he's more delusional than Kane. What do you think, Nate? I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, maybe maybe this is the new and improved Austin. Maybe he's had a great week and he's feeling positive tonight. But uh, All right. I got a question. You had another. I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. This is a question for you, Austin, because we know how much you love Seth Rollins. How do you feel yes, about sir. your boy Rollins? How do you feel about Rollins snitching on Kane with that quote-unquote anonymous email? You know, Nate, I don't understand uh, exactly what you're saying there. Seth is doing just fine. WWE World Heavyweight Champion doing his job every single night in house shows, traveling you know, day after day, going to cross the things. He's an incredible, an incredible person, an incredible person, inspirational person, and a, a, a poster boy for the company. He is the man. But, but he's going to have to fight. He's going to have to fight Kane at Hell in a Cell. So who are you going to have to go with? Those are both your friends. Well, Very I don't true. know about that. You know, I don't know about that. It's uh, you know, whatever they decide, I'm going to go has with. It been, has it been made official? Did I miss it? Has it been made official? Has that match, match been made? I don't think it's been made official no. yet, but it, it 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 will be, Austin. It will be. Oh, I'm sure of that. <laughs> you know, if if the authority says the same, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. I'm oh. sure Kane and, and Seth will have a great, friendly match contested. I mean, <laughs> I remember we seeing, yes, I mean, I, I, hell in a cell. Kane is uh, a great, a great person. I mean, once you guys get to know Glenn, he can uh, he can be really warm your heart. Wow. Glenn. Maybe you need to go to hell, man, because they're going on the go to hell tour in October, and and I, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I, I'm not buying that. I, I, I'm not buying it, Austin. I am got to wonder, are you more delusional than Kane is? Because lately, unless your screen has gone foggy, you haven't been noticing that there there is two different teams. Obviously, not two different people, but two different versions of Kane. And really, you know, you know, feel that, you might actually. You should actually start, uh, instead of doing the whole entire fitness thing, you might have to get your eyes checked because I don't know if you're seeing oh, I, I plan on it. exactly what I'm seeing right now. I, I don't think anybody can see what you're seeing right now, Austin. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't buy this. So what's, what, what's really going on? I know you got to be worried. Just as Seth is worried. You don't want to piss off the big red, big red machine. And deep down inside corporate team, there is always and always will be that monster, so. Seth is I don't know what monster you're talking about. The big I red see a monster totally that, different uh, man. Yeah, you see the fake smile and the and the, the corporate suit and uh, the happy-go-lucky guy that's got that monster inside of him that can that uh, that Seth Rollins tends to let unloose from time to time. No, I don't understand what you're saying, but you know Seth Rollins, the man in WWE, is uh, just a a model person for the company, and he should be. But it, just as, you know, great champions come, people are always there to take them where they need to go. And uh, I'm sure I'm sure there is going to be that person pretty soon. You might have seen him. You think so? We might just have to make you the special guest referee, man. What do you think? 
You know, they talk about that every single time it was supposed to happen oh, this past April WrestleMania. I mean, this past March of WrestleMania. But I said, I got to go spend it with the family. Got to go to Candy <laughs> Lake up in, you know, up north Louisiana and, and do my thing there. And we just had a peaceful vacation a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, you know, Isn't, don't you still all, live in all things are going well, right? Don't you, don't you still live in Huma? Yes, I do. Huma, Louisiana, just a, a stretch from New Orleans. Knowledge. Inside of WrestleMania 30. Yeah. Now, are you going to be joining Heyman and Brock Lesnar on the Go to Hell tour? You know, I'm going to stay my distance away from Brock Lesnar. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you, Kane has actually advised me to, to stay away from Brock Lesnar, considering the fact that Brock broke his ankle a couple months back, and uh, we don't want to relive, relive that, okay? So I you think definitely don't want to go to different Netflix, subject, right? No, 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 I am perfectly Austin. fine here in home Louisiana, safe and sound <laughs> in my uh, in my humble abode, right? Just like All right, uh, well, then I got a question for you, Austin. We're going to move away from your authority. And great, I love Lesnar. questions. I, all right, fine. I'm going to fire away with you first since I usually go to Nate and, and you're here now, so we'll go with you first. What is the deal with Paige? She dropped the Paige bomb. Now, is this now, do you agree with how they blurred the line between reality and, and storyline a little bit and kind of told it how it was or at least how they felt it was or how at least how the fans felt it was? Or and, and what do you think her intentions are? Do you see a new champ? Is she right? Will the Nivella Army be back up and running again? Or is Charlotte and is Charlotte just a, a temporary placeholder or title holder, mm, placeholder, whatever you, know. you call it? Charlotte Flair is a is she's a champion. She looks like a champion, but at the same time, I think somebody needs to come around and you know take her out eventually. Because I mean, uh, you know, Paige. Uh, I don't know. I mean, as much as I love Charlotte, I don't know necessarily necessarily if she actually is ready. Uh, you know, I hate saying that because I love her, but I mean, uh, Paige needs to you know take it back, that Divas Revolution, and, and turn it into something that's uh, it's more rough. You know? You know what I'm saying? I think it's been too, uh, uh, I don't, too like a, I don't know, I can't explain it, it's just it's been so, it's not, it hasn't been what I expected it, expected, you know, what it should have been. Mm-hmm. Okay, and how about you, Nate? You see where this thing has been going with the, the whole, uh, Anti diva, I guess you'd call her a page. The raven haired vixen, as what was it? The what was it that uh, Regal called her? The raven haired Helen diva? Boots. Whatever. Uh, no, no, I, I know what, she, what he said. He used to say, "Oh yeah, Paige is the enchanted raven haired lady." Something to that extent. It you, was, what it are you thinking about these extent. changes, Nate? With the shut up. With the. <laughs> With this change, it's kind, of, it's kind of, you know, obviously they're trying to spice up the, the Divas Revolution, if you will, and they're trying to make Becky Lynch somewhat relevant because they're, she, I mean, Paige annihilated her just, just about a week ago. <laughs> yes. yes, she did. Oh, man. But, uh, it, what were your thoughts on that whole thing, man? It's crazy, Felix, because, yes, it has gotten more interesting, but this is one of the rare cases where I think – You've got something that's gotten more interesting, but it has also gotten more confusing. And because of that, I'm starting not to care because you're, give, you're still not giving me a reason to root for these girls. You're still not giving me a reason to, you know, cheer for Charlotte, to cheer for Becky Lynch. Uh, you know, they hate Paige so much that they tagged with her on Monday night. Like, if, if I hated somebody, let's. Let's just use an example, and you know I'm not saying anything to say it, Austin. But if I hated you, and you had said some pretty bad stuff about me the week before, and Felix said, "Hey guys, let's do a podcast," I think I would have to speak to you first, Austin, and and I would speak with my hands and my words before we were able to do a podcast together. So seeing those three tag together on Monday night was just not right. Uh, I don't know where they're going. Team Bad wasn't even involved in this segment. And I think Sasha Banks might be the best out of them all, and she wasn't even uh, a part of the show. You know, I don't know about that because you're you're saying people you know look at Becky Lynch like Sasha Banks and and Charlotte, but 
Look at the Bella twins. I mean, come on. Nikki Bella is oh, the longest reigning Divas champion of all time. <laughs> of all time. And, and nobody thought it could be done. I always felt in my heart of hearts that Nikki would have done it. And she is just an inspirational person and a person I look up to. I really do. She is. Come on. Are you, are you dating Nikki too? I love her. What? Mm-hmm. Are you dating Nikki too? You and Cena are both hitting that? <laughs> now let's keep professional, Felix. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I, you, I mean, I don't know if you're you're being paid or you're dating her too. I am so sick of two completely non-wrestling women taking over the television, boring people to death with their their, their BS. Their drama, their reality TV vixens and, and whatever you want to call them. I want to see women wrestle. I don't want to see this what do you say? plotting around oh, talking about. Really? I don't, I don't see that they wrestle. Do you want, like, Trish Trash to come back and, and try to kick all these girls' asses? It's impossible because Nikki would take them down with a just stare. I mean, you know, I just, it's, it's things like that. So just a you stare? Think, just a stare. The Bella Twins are going to look at Trish, they're going to look at Lita, Ivory. Uh, you know, name them all Molly Holly and just down, down for the count every single time to look at them. Huh? Diva's you Revolution. Must be smoking, talking about smoking crack, talking about where <laughs> crack is right here. A lot of crack mean? being smoked tonight. Good grief. I don't do any of the crack. But maybe you actually, actually talk to my good friend Snoop Dogg. He is no <laughs> joke. Oh, he did not just go there. He did not just go there. Oh, good no grief. joke. Like his concert. <laughs> I know he's no joke. Oh, baby Jesus. I had to say, Austin, it's you're like not a box of fluffy ducks. He's not a, he's not a box of fluffy ducks. Fluffy ducks. I can't <laughs> even talk now. <laughs> That's all you see when you're at his concert, so. A box yeah, of fluffy sure. ducks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. But uh, overall, Monday Night Raw was okay. I mean, it was, it was, it was not the greatest show. But it wasn't the worst show. I'll just leave it at that. You know, what's to come for Hell in a Cell? It is the final battle between the, the, the Phenom, the Undertaker, and the Beast as the Go to Hell tour starts this Saturday. And he takes on, the, the Beast Incarnate takes on the world's largest athlete, the Big Show. Love him. One of their many, 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 many thousands of matches they've had. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously it's just a tune up, just a warm up, if you will. And, of course, then uh, the, the Brock's got his uh, podcast with Steve Austin coming up later this month, but next month, excuse me. And it concludes with Hell in the Cell. Oh, we're going to have some fun dissecting that pay-per-view in a couple of years. Oh, yeah. But, um, Felix. Yes, sir. Let me ask you a question. You know, you, I don't think this has been mentioned at all because, you know, Nate's not going to mention him because it is going to piss you off. Because you're doing your fitness oh, thing, sure. and you know he doesn't get your heart rate up more than it is already. But you know, SummerSlam, that, okay. Brock versus the Undertaker, and I swear to God, oh, here we Undertaker go. cheated. And oh. you don't—you're not mentioning the fact that he might actually do it again when he's trapped in a cell. And he, yet, guys, keep, people listening right now, keep in mind the Undertaker is a magician. Chris Angel has nothing on the Undertaker. I don't care who you think it is. What's his name? The the guy that made the Fetch Liberty disappear, and and David Blaine and all these guys. The Undertaker has mythical powers, and and that is not. <laughs> it's insane that you put him in a wrestling ring with guys that are normal humans. It's not. It's not fair. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, I don't see it. Awesome. I don't see how Do you, anybody will let him be in a, when a wrestling ring anyway. When the Undertaker debuted, was he a good guy or was he hated? When he became the, the the Lord of Darkness, leading the ministry, was he hated? Did he do some underhanded things? Did he bust the big show over the head with a baseball bat? <laughs> oh that. my God! The Undertaker has done some dastardly things in his twenty five year career. Far be it from him to 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 cheat to win. Oh, my God, like it's never been done before. Come on. Like you're not mentioning a, a time a where he, he wears technically, sunglasses technically, indoors? When the referee counts three, if you want to go technical, the winner, in the winner's book, it says the undertaker. That's it. Take it as you will, and most will. 
With that being said, gentlemen, we do have a caller on the line. So we will go ahead and bring him on and hear his input on Monday Night Raw and what he thought of the show tonight, if he listened in. Hello, you're on with Austin, with Nate, with Felix. How you doing? Hey, guys. How you doing? What's going on, man? I'm doing doing just fine. Were you able to listen to the show? Yes, I was. I heard I I heard three voices when I heard that guy come on. I heard Piper. I heard I heard a little little genius. If you, I heard a little of the genius, and I heard uh, Luscious Johnny Valentine a little bit. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. When I I mean when I sometimes when he was talking the way he was breaking up it, it sounded kind of like Johnny Valentine a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sure he'll take that but, as a compliment as well. So I can so I can see I can see him doing different voices and stuff. But no, it was a great, he did a great a good show. Man, though. Yeah, he did. He did. He actually, yeah, that was actually pretty good. He just came out of nowhere with that. I can get that. Like, like, <laughs> his macho might be better than Piper. Yeah, you, you, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> well, even he thought it would be better too. But you know, when they chose him to do the Piper one, it, it worked out better for him. So. Yeah, it did. Yep. It did, and definitely, definitely went with the story. Sure, sure. But, I can do it way uh, better than him. <laughs> Pay so no attention to Monday, Monday Night Raw, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, um, as far as getting back to Monday Night Raw, I mean, I, I mean, um, Felix was right. I mean, I mean, Felix, I mean, no, I'm sorry, Nate. Nate was right about how, um, you know, Paige hates Paige. I mean, Charlotte and and um. Becky Lynch hate Paige and they they team with her. Meanwhile, Paige hates them, but she doesn't challenge them for the belt. She doesn't challenge yeah. Charlotte for the belt or ask for a, for a title shot. <laughs> so I don't I don't really know what's going on there. Even when she even last week she went through her you know what I'm saying her pipe bomb pipe bomb monologue. She never even once mentioned the title or asked for a shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because Nikki Bella deserves it. Oh, here we go. She understands already. Again, again, pay no attention to the little voice in the back of the in the back of the system there. Uh, <laughs> nobody else does. Uh, well, I thought it was that time developed. where he had to go to the fridge to get the to get the soda and the popcorn where where the bad stuff happens. <laughs> something like that. Something like that. <laughs> but, uh, but you know what? Though he is a Bella follower, and I know there are many of them. Yeah. I just don't think I think their time is up. They, they were used for what they were used for, which is obviously a race. Uh, AJ Lee's status as the longest reigning Divas champion. Now there has even been talk of bringing back the women's title. Maybe not necessarily calling it the women's title, but maybe calling it the WWE uh, Women's World Heavyweight Championship or something to that extent. Because they have the oh. NXT Women's Title, why not bring back the actual women's title? Maybe yeah, rebranded exactly. to something else. Definitely now. Now that you got more athletes, and I mean, now you got people coming yeah. from NXT. Definitely wrestling again. Sure. Yeah. And um, you know, bring bring in. Now, are they gonna do a uh, women's um Hell in the Cell match? I don't think they'll do it. I don't think they'll do it, and I'll tell you why. It's because for the WWE, especially for Vince McMahon, it's about TNA. It's about beauty. It's about their be- the the beautiful faces. And- He's all about doing the stuff that won't hurt their faces. And I think in putting them in a hell in the cell and the brutality of it, I don't think they'll do it. Now, if they do do it, it'll be, it won't be as dangerous. It won't be as vicious as the men. The men's uh, hell in the cell, obviously. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, um, I mean, people, people always complain about color, not enough color, not enough color. I, I would think of all the pay-per-views, I mean... I think this one should have the most color or even color at all because how are you how are you in a cage and not bleeding? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't have to, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, you don't have to do Royal Rumble bloody. You don't have to do none of the other pay-per-views. But, I mean, Hell in a Cell is, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's cage. It's, you know, and then you're going to have one person that wants to climb the top of the cage, that wants to do the Mick Foley stuff. So how how are they not how are they not getting color on especially at that match? That's true, and it's a it's a another reality of the PG era that that we have to deal with, unfortunately. Because you're right, like I 
I think that wrestling tends to go to the extreme too much. Like back in the 90s, I think there was way too much blood. And so then they swing the pendulum all the way to the other side where there's no blood at all unless it's hard way. And so it's like you get this big, violent Hell in a Cell match. Like let's say it's Brock and Taker. You can't tell me you got the Undertaker and Brock Lesnar in a cage and nobody's bleeding. It doesn't make sense. But that's where they are right now because everything's so PG. Yeah, but then Seth Rollins and um, Dean Ambrose didn't catch no blood last year either. So. Yeah, they did. I think there was enough blood in that moon a couple of days ago to last me for a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay, I'll give, I'll give you that, Austin, even though I didn't actually see it. I saw pictures of it. So, yeah, maybe they'll have a new Twilight coming out. Maybe you can go watch it then. What do you think? Well, he, well, <laughs> well Seth Rollins didn't lose no blood, but he lost, he lost some of his soul when he went under that ring, though. So. I didn't see that. <laughs> no, of course you did. Of course you did. <laughs> you know, I think it's funny. I think this whole entire blood moon thing is getting in everybody's mind. It's kind of like the the wolves that come out at night. I mean, they're seeing people and telling me and on social media messaging me. Also, you've seen Seth Rollins under the ring. What the hell? And then supposedly Kane came back. Whatever. And then, you know, the monster Kane. I don't know what that guy. And then he brought him down in the ring and did something to him. There's stories going around. I don't believe it. I didn't see it. My cable went out. Probably. I'm not sure. So see, I, th- I think that's a good question we should we should uh, we should ask the caller, Felix, because I think the Seth Rollins stuff with Kane, I-, I don't think it's terrible, but I do think it's below your world champion. I think if if this were a a feud for the IC belt or the US belt, and they were doing all this stuff, it'd be cool. But I think it once again makes Seth Rollins look like he's not their top guy, which he should be if he's the champ. What what do you think about that? No, as far as, far as that, I mean, I agree with you. But but here here's the point. He's the last guy left before Seth Rollins has to take eventually have to take on Triple H. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's the way I, I see it going because Triple H, you know, he he puts he puts all these obstacles in front of Seth Rollins where Kane is like the last link to where okay I don't have nothing really for Seth right now. I mean you got Roman gone. I mean Roman and. Roman and Dean fighting the Wyatts, and we don't know what's going to happen with that. Then you got, I mean, then you had J&J Security, they're gone. Now, the last link to uh, going up to Triple H, before maybe he loses to Brock Lesnar or maybe he takes off someone at Russell, it's Triple H. There's no one standing. He's like, okay, you, you fought all these guys, you beat them, but you haven't beaten me. Now it's time. Hmm. I don't know about that. I could see. I, that. I, 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 that. I could see it leading to I, that. I, I could see it leading. I like to that. that, but uh, I think. How about this? Let me let me hear how you like this because I do I do like that idea, but I think what's going to end up happening is Brock is going to win the title back, and that's going to lead to the Triple H Rollins split because they've got this like almost father son dynamic, and I think you're going to have a point where either Triple H pushes Rollins too far, he loses to Brock, and then. Rollins snaps on Triple H or the other way around, and then that's what leads us to the match. At uh, I, don't, I don't know if they'll save that for WrestleMania or afterwards, but I think Brock is going to get the title first, and then we'll do Hunter and uh, Rollins. Are you guys delusional? I, I can still see that happening, but but would it be <laughs> would it be Here's Royal Rumble delusional. or that next pay per view, or would it be WrestleMania? Oh my God. It could be at the Royal Rumble, for all we know. You know what would be cool is to have, and like this is one of the few times where I would really enjoy just seeing a guy just waste everybody in the Royal Rumble. Have because Brock <laughs> never lost the title fairly, or, or never really had a fair shot in that rematch because Taker came in. So let's assume he beats sure. Taker at Hell in a Cell. Let's assume, sorry, Felix, that he beats Taker at Hell in a Cell. That's okay, and right. and then. His only way to get back to the title is to go through the Royal Rumble, and we get Brock Lesnar just going through dudes, like 20, 30, however many, 40. I don't know if they want to put 40 people in the Rumble this year, but Brock just goes in, demolishes them, and it's Brock and Rollins. Brock wins. Uh, yeah, I guess he'd have to go to WrestleMania then. Brock would win at WrestleMania. And then, uh, yeah, then Rollins and, and Triple H could be for SummerSlam. Yeah, that's, that's an even that's better that choice. Okay, oh, my God. No, no, let me you know, I'm going to speak up here for a second. Go I'm going to speak up here. 
Triple H and Seth Rollins just get the record straight. There is no beef between them. There is never going to be beef between them. These two are like, like Nate said, it was the first thing he said that was actually relevant within the past hour. Uh, there, there is a father and son relationship here, and it's something that it's, I've never had this with my father. I mean, it's such an inspirational thing to see Triple H, Hunter, and Seth. Just a, the relationship is, is so strong. You guys have no clue. There's not going to be any. Don't don't pay your nine ninety nine for something you aren't going to see. I don't pay nine ninety nine. Well, you know, sometimes the father has to spank the son, so. <laughs> they, they, right. no, None of that's going on. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. You you got Brock winning at the Royal Rumble. Who's going to throw more people out, Brock or uh, um, Braun Strowman? <laughs> oh, I think that I think we'll get a we'll, we we we'll probably actually get a spot in the match where Brock and and Braun have a stare off because they they've been really big about protecting Braun Strowman and making him look like a big deal. So we might actually get a stare-off between those two before they go back into throwing other people out. But uh, I'd say Brock probably throws more people out just because I like I think – and I think Brock is going to have some creative ways to throw people out, different suplexes and things of that nature, maybe F5 some people over the ropes. Like, I think this could be a very physical Royal Rumble with Brock Lesnar in it. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you – now a um, bad idea. One 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 last question as far as tag. Speaking of um, Braun Strowman, do you, you see you see him and um, Harper winning the belts. I could oh. definitely see them doing it. I could definitely see could, them winning it because they have that they had that that dominance in them. I hope not though, Felix, because I I I think the new day is still pretty damn entertaining, and I'd hate for them to to kind of cut them off at the knees this quick. Amen. I think those guys think are incredible Xavier dancers. Woods is a very, uh, a very reminiscent to Jimmy Hart with that damn megaphone. Do a do do do. Oh my it's god! Uh, annoying with that stuff, but yeah, very effective. Like he killed me yeah, on a raw things. on a Monday night when they were doing the stuff before the Cena match, and they were like, uh, "Yeah, we gonna be like Scrooge McDuck swimming in money," and y'all thought we couldn't swim. <laughs> it's like just the, the stuff these dudes say that they come up with, man. It's so creative hustle and so funny. Yeah, it was really, it yeah, loyalty and booty. <laughs> was it me or was it, or were they were they gelling with um, what's his name um, the one with Summer Rae? Oh, uh, Rusev. <laughs> Yeah, they were pretty. They were pretty much gelling yeah. in that. <laughs> and then that, when, he, that, when he when he played Rusev's song on that trombone, I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that was a good little team. I, I think the New Day. It's it's funny because I think all three of those guys, like they were good before, but putting them together has uh-huh. has made the fans take notice of them. And so I think you got a a situation where. If everything goes right, man, I think Kofi could be elevated from this. Xavier certainly has been elevated. And Big E, I thought he was a guy that could be online for a world title shot, you know, a few years ago when he was really hot. And then they cooled off on him. But, man, if he keeps going and showing his personality, who knows? Maybe they'll take a second look and say, you know what? This guy is pretty good. Maybe we should start treating him seriously again. Yeah, you know, true. I agree with that, Nate. But I think there is bigger things in the future – for Biggie Langston, kind of like uh, Dancing with the Stars, because I've never seen oh, I have never seen in my entire life a better dancer than Big E. Oh my gosh! A big man it makes me like think back to Eric Clapton. Uh, Eric Clapton, wow! Uh, ask, does everything have to do with cocaine tonight? Oh Jesus! Uh, you know, no, if, if, if the new day, if the new day can get Stephanie McMahon and Triple H, two people who have no rhythm. Yeah, dance like a bunch of fools. Maybe they got something. What are you talking about? Maybe they got something. You must not have heard the the news lately. Last week, I actually had a call from because you know since I'm the manager, you know of this order and everything. But I mean, Dancing with the Stars oh, really producer good. called me and said that they want a trip and Steph on Dancing with the Stars after their their recent dancing uh, with the New Day. So I think, you know, there might actually be some some rumblings in the future. You know. Great dancers. Uh, yeah, if you say so, my friend, if you say so. <laughs> yeah, cause two, but, uh, two, two, two guys I would like to see the Wyatt feud is uh, either, um, is either. I mean, I would like to see him take on the Dully boys. 
and, and then sure. I would like to see him. I would I would definitely like to see him take on the Brothers of Destruction. Oh, they actually yeah, are yeah. scheduled to face them on uh, yeah, uh, Mexico, I think it's right? The Mexico tour, I think it's that one that they're supposed to be facing. Them. It's supposed to be uh, uh, Harper and, and, and Stroman. So that'll be fun. That'll be fun to see. But, okay. Uh, All right, guys. It's, it's a pleasure as always. All right, man. Thanks for calling. Hey, we'll talk to you yeah, later. thanks. Thanks for calling. Thanks for putting up with Austin tonight, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh no doubt, no doubt. We always we. It's always good to have another person on. <laughs> sure. Always good to have another person on. All right. All right. Have a good night. All right, man. And there you have it. We have another insightful call from one of our listeners. We appreciate him calling in. And those who listened in tonight, we hope you guys, you guys have enjoyed this uh, entertaining last hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes we've been on air. Next week on the show, I want to bring that up now, but we'll be posting on it later this week. But um, we will have returning to the show after two years. And I think it's fitting considering we're going into the month of October and the much, how much fun we had talking to him and the kind of stuff he's into. We're having independent wrestler Vinny Marcelia coming back to the show. And Austin remembers him pretty well. I'm sure he does, because I know I do. He, he was into some of the crazy stuff that, I would have never expected anybody to say, and I say that because it has a lot to do with Halloween coming up. Not necessarily because it's next week, but October is Halloween month. So why not bring in a guy who definitely has a lot to say about the the, 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 the month of the, the Halloween uh, holiday and to find out what he's been up to since we last spoke to him two years ago. So Vinny Marcelia was coming to the show next week. And on a, on a side note as well, for Not Your Mama's Radio Show fan, uh, the guys actually are going to be busy this week, but they're going to be on this Friday night instead of Thursday night. They're actually going to do it on Friday night because obviously if you heard, Oscar's going to be doing be filming some uh, Not Your Mama's t- uh, TV on Thursday. And so therefore we're going to bring on a very special guest Friday night, that being from the Cauliflower Alley, the one and only Mr. Morgan Dollar, and a few other special surprises as well. But uh, that's what's coming up this week on the High Bomb Radio Network. This next week is going to be pretty fun as we go into, and I can tell you for a fact, October 13th, two of the biggest minds, two of the most outspoken uh, let me rephrase that. It's actually three. Three of the, the the biggest, the great minds in the independent wrestling scene, very outspoken, very vocal people who, when it comes to the wrestling business, they don't sugarcoat a damn thing. <laughs> who am I talking about? I can't say it just yet, but I'm excited to have them come back. There, there's going to be a little group panel discussion with three great minds. Austin, you're, wel- you're welcome to join Little paddle wand. Maybe that's a hint for you. Really, you know, <laughs> actually, sorry to interrupt you right now. I was actually going to mention oh, WWE 2K16, the video game, out October 29th. You know, Austin is on the cover. They tried to draw like me, and yeah, I think the artist oh, could have done a little bit please. better. But I mean, you know, who is to say? Well, yeah, I know please. it's going to be a great game for the kids. You know, Christmas just around the corner. Sure. And little Padawan, will you be joining us on October 13th? October 13th, what day is that? Uh, two weeks from tonight. Obviously, what day is it? Are you kidding me? It's Tuesday, you moron. Tuesday, you know, I actually may, I might have to do it. I don't know if that's the day I have to order my eggnog from uh, from eggnog.com. You're ready for the Christmas season? Are you kidding me? Just like you're talking about your Subway sandwiches and tomatoes, or you go to <laughs> Subway.com. Oh, you guys don't do that? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was the only one that uh, that ordered from Aidenog.com. But um, anyway, you know, yeah, I'll try to make it. I'm sure it's going to be an incredible show, just like tonight was. Being with two it's incredible really people like Phil Salmito and, and Nate Milton, right? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate that. I don't know what else to say, but okay. 
<laughs> it's a trap. Nick, I, want to check. <laughs> I know. I'm like kind of treading lightly there. But Nick, uh, what's going on on the, on the Kings and Sports? The, the, you know, you got a couple things in brewing, and let's hear all about it, man. Well, yeah, real quick, uh, the Kings of Sport is a show every week that I do with Marcus Vandenberg. It's available on iTunes and Stitcher. And you can check us out on Twitter at KOS underscore POD, Kyle Spot on Twitter. Uh, this past week, we were talking to Sierra Reed from Ring Bells uh, about the Divas Revolution. We were also talking some football. And we uh, remembered the life of Yogi Berra, the uh, great Yankees catcher that passed uh, last week. So that was last week's show. Got another great show coming up this week. We haven't recorded it yet, but uh, you can best believe it's going to be a fun show. My other show that I do is uh, currently on its last week. Uh, Review and Impact, the final show for us, is going to be this weekend before Brian Mann and myself change over to a brand-new podcast called Keep It 100, which will begin airing on October 9th. So, uh I'm looking forward to that. I think you guys and girls out there are going to dig what we what we have to bring to the table. Uh, Felix knows one of our first guests on the show, so it, it's going to be a very cool show. And then that's that's all I'm going to say, Felix, about Keep It 100. So uh, Keep It 100, I've Kings also of gotten... Sport. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Keep It 100, Kings of Sport, and, of course, Pipe Bomb Radio. That's that's where you can find me, folks. And I just got. Uh, I just want to let you know. I should have mentioned it earlier when Oscar was on, but both Oscar and Sir Mo have agreed to to to, to, to your request. Yes. That, uh, so yeah, just just let them know when, and they'll be there. All right. So yeah, you can look forward to that. I believe you're friends with them. You're, you're friends with them on Facebook, right? Yeah, I'm friends with them on Facebook, and I I follow Oscar on Twitter. We both follow each other, so yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, that'll, 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 be, that uh, that'll be fun, and then hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully, maybe we'll have you on one day, Felix, when we can talk about drug use in the wrestling industry. And sure, I'll be oh, on. did you just see that? No problem. Wow. This, this, you I'll see, the, you reason, later, man. the reason Austin's here tonight, Felix, is this is an intervention. We love you, Felix. We want you to get better, man. Put the pipe, <laughs> put the pipe down, Felix. Put the pipe down, man. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. I was just taking uh, a call. I knew there was a reason Austin was on because I still couldn't figure it out. Now, I always wondered why you Felix called this pipe bomb radio. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> the secret is out, damn it. <laughs> Wait, oh. the secret. Why don't you guys tell me about this secret? Come on. I, I love secrets. <laughs> I give you guys the inside you scoop not, every single week. I, because I you love you guys. Listening? Come on. Oh. Great oh. partners in crime. We're, we're like <laughs> Batman and Robin, except we're, we're doing good for society. Oh. <laughs> right? Society. I'm not sure what's love okay. society. Love people. Human yeah. beings, right. you know? Every every Tuesday uh-huh. when he's on, I just I just get off the phone feeling co- more confused. I think I do, too. I think I can get off the phone with a little bit more white hair because I'm actually, like, I'm stressing. The str- I'm pulling my, I'm trying to, like, what is, what is he doing? What is he saying? I don't understand. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to stress over it anymore. I'm either gonna go completely wild no, on my it's hair. Fine, or I'm you know, I, I think bald. it's just uh it's something that I've i you guys never really noticed, I don't know. Um just stop eating the yolks and the eggs, the cholesterol is probably getting to your head because yeah. I've always been uh been a great person to be around. I'm always so happy to be around Nate Milton and, and Felix Almedo every single Tuesday night on Pipe Bomb Radio. <laughs> he he must really? want something, Felix. He must want something. I'm beginning to wonder myself. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want anything from you guys. Retired. Santa Claus is taking care of me. This year I've been a really good boy. <laughs> <laughs> so what's keeping your halo up, uh, Austin? Is it those, the horns coming out of your head? I've gotten those taken out a long time ago. I went through a phase <laughs> where I was interested in the taboo stuff. Another story for another day, but, you know, I'm I'm very happy to be back here on Pipe Bomb Radio. So happy. Well, we've got about we've got about I'm ten glowing. minutes left. We've got about ten minutes left. We actually have another caller. We'll see who it is. What the heck? Why not? We got some time to spare. So, you're on the air with Austin, Nate, and myself. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi, I said. How you doing? I'm good. My name is Saul Rosenberg. That's S O L R O S E N Berg. Hi. <laughs> I, what's you going on? What's, I'm what's doing your phenomenal as well. What's your question? Uh, excuse me? What is your question? Oh, uh, well, I I was just listening to the show, and it's very good. Very, very good. Thank you. And uh, I just wanted to say that, oh, you, just, you know, stay away from drugs, please. <laughs> I think that I, is, I, that I, is very I know because I, I know you're in intervention tonight, and you know I heard <laughs> you know lots of talk about crack and smoking and pipe bomb radio. That's why it's named pipe bomb radio is because of crack pipes and whatnot. But um, oh god, don't do that because you might end up like Austin. Thank you. <laughs> that's an ex- that's an excellent point. <laughs> that was it's a great. It's true. I mean, just say no. Hey man, I say my prayers. I eat my vitamins every single day. The Hulkster told me so. So I got to tell you, I changed my life around a long time ago. Oh, and Booker did, T did, went yeah. after him. You know that, right? <laughs> Booker T went so after him. What, what, what is this, Austin Mania now? I think <laughs> Austin Mania. I, think I do Austin's a great appreciation of Steve Austin. Listen to this. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello? Austin, are you there? What? That's incredible. On, I love that impression of Steve Austin. Little freak. <laughs> I can do a little bit better than you, just like I can do Macho Man better than than Pat Piper. Oh, Pat Piper, oh. he's an asshole. But anyway, <laughs> okay, let, let's let's hear let's hear some impersonations then. Okay, okay, go ahead. Right. Okay, this is Good. ready, guys. This is great. I'm telling you, I've worked okay, on this for ahead. months. This is Shoot. Macho Man. Okay, here it goes. Oh yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I love it. Dig it. Yes. Oh, God, you sound just like him. Where's the rest of it? You know, my mom told me that yesterday. No, I bet she did. (laughs) (laughs) But like I said, you know, Felix, stay away from drugs. Okay. I agree. I agree, Felix. We want you to be clean. Yeah, you don't want to end up too fruity like uh, some other people here. Yeah, Nate, come on. <laughs> I think oh, I'm not directed. talking about Nate there. Yeah, I think that was directed at you, Austin. Yeah. Young young fella. Young Padawan. <laughs> OBGYN. Oh, hell no. <laughs> wow. Uh, you got nothing to say, Austin? You were talking all show, and now you got nothing to say. Yeah, now all of a sudden you're shutting up. What's the matter? Wow. Hello. Hi. I was just thinking about the time. Hi, I, I said, hello. <laughs> Say something, you silly little fruity freak. <laughs> How do you know I ate my fruity pebbles this morning? I'm oh, you're a big milk. John Cena yeah, fan, I guess. Free. <sighs> oh. oh, so you train, you say your prayers, you eat your vitamins and your fruity pebbles. Great. <laughs> I'm trying to get... <laughs> you're trying to get what? <laughs> Nikki Bella, what? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Now he doesn't want to talk. <laughs> I'm, I'm Come on, let's know. talk about Nikki Bella or something. Oh, Nikki Bella. The Bella brand is running strong, just like Total Divas on the I'm so excited for the season finale. Now, do you, like, get naked and rub yourself in peanut butter and stuff? <laughs> uh, well, you know what? It depends on the night. But anyway, you know, I uh, I love enjoying... You know, watching the show every single Tuesday night, it's incredible. Oh, oh, oh I bet you do. <laughs> That's your chunky. Wow. Nikki Bella is inspiration. I oh, you. I, I bet she inspires you in more ways than one, you silly little guy. Love <laughs> <laughs> her. Oh. Uh, I want to hear some more impersonations because, oh, my God, you are great. You know, I know. Like I said, my mom tells me that all the time. My you mom know, tells me that all the time, too. She says, stop playing with that. <laughs> you, you, you remind me of Cornette when you say that. Jimmy was always a mama's boy. Yes, he was. Are you related to Mr. Cornette? Thank you. 
No, I'm not related to Jimmy Boy, but you know... I didn't mean to make you nervous. I noticed you were stuttering a little bit there. (laughs) You know, I have my... You don't have your confidence, Austin. You you don't have your confidence. Where where to go? (laughs) Well, we lost lost our caller. We lost our caller. But that was... uh, Wow. I don't think I've laughed that hard in months. Oh, uh, Austin, 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 Austin. Wait, so how do you guys like my Macho Man impression? Uh, it was a Find your rest, Phoenix, brother. Find your rest. You thought it was great? <laughs> it, it, was, was, it was a it box was of phenomenal. Oh, wait a, a minute, little bit better than Pat Piper's. I know, I try my hardest. What about <laughs> Pat Piper? <laughs> oh, I'm you're drifting away, son. Speak up. Hello? Oh, hey. He's back. Oh, yes. I, I got lost there for a second. Lost in translation? Hello? Austin, he's talking to you. How you doing? What, what, what's this guy's name? What's your name? My name is Saul Rosenberg. S-O-L-R-O-S-E-N. Wait for it. Bird. Wait for it. <laughs> Berg. <laughs> so we found out. So I'd just like to say, finally, the Berg has come back to Pipe Bomb Radio. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Austin, I don't know what you you getting killed here on your on your on your own home turf. Yeah, Austin. I know my ABCs. I learned them last week. This guy knows what? how to spell too. What? We have something in common. What? What? <laughs> Did I stutter? What? Damn it. What? Hello? I think what? you're with Verizon. Then. I change your phone companies. It'll do you a huge, you know, it just update. Okay, I'm looking at my Nikki Bella poster right now. What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've never heard Austin this quiet, Felix. I haven't either. I haven't either. Maybe I should call him more I don't know if you guys have any courtesy. I'm trying to text Kanye right now. You're drifting away, son. Speak up. I said uh, you guys should have some courtesy. I'm trying to text Kanye right now. There's a huge party happening Friday night. I I do the details. Just give me a second. Damn it. I'll give, I'll give you more than a second. I'll give you ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, what? Five, four, three, what? Two, one, what? Hello, are you there? Oh, he's too busy texting. He's texting Kanye. Yeah, I bet. What, he was texting Nikki. Oh, oh, tell her I said hey. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I think I think we found a way to get rid of Austin. I think so. Well, What's I will mean? say this. I will say this. We are actually running very very low out of time. We have got about ninety seconds left. Uh, we definitely want to thank Pat Piper for for the show tonight. Incredible, incredible guy. Yes, uh, his character is an asshole, but you know what? He's entertaining as hell. Let me tell you. See, I told and, you. <laughs> and of course, our caller that called in earlier, and of course, Mr. R-O-S-E-N, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, it. Berg. Wait for it. <laughs> Berg. There you go, there you go. <laughs> oh, God, I'm a awesome superstar. I'm, let me smell my armpits. <laughs> and Austin, as always, as always your, your input is always fun to listen to as well. I know you're talking to your. Imaginary friends in the corner there, so. Yeah, just give me a second. Hold on. <laughs> well, we're oh, running out of time, son, so we will say our goodbyes. Uh, any final words before we cut out of here? Anybody? Anybody? What? What? <laughs> any, <laughs> any, any final words? Um, bye, Austin. Love ya. <laughs> Love you too, man. I'll, I'll, right. I'll tweet you. I'll email you. Oh, I'm sure I'll you Facebook will. You. Okay, Let, let's get together and do lunch, right? Fine, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Cafe <laughs> Dumont, New Orleans, Thursday. 
4 p.m. Where, 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 where are we going? Café du Monde, best place. New oh, Orleans. Do you want to do Dutch or do you want to pay? You know, wow. you pay your own. I mean, I'll, I will I get to charity all the time. I'm a you know, a philanthropist and a visionary of children across the world, so I try to do my best by giving a penny every single day, you know? Okay, well, maybe we can get together and, you know, hit each other with a bunch of sticks or something. I don't know. We'll do something. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Come on. Austin, okay. Can, Austin, can you spell philanthropist? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 Uh, it's so quiet. Uh, all right, oh, guys. Wonderful. On behalf of uh, on behalf of Nate Austin, uh, Mr. Rosenberg, Pat Piper, everybody who called in tonight, this is Felix with Pipe Bomb Radio, and of course this crazy team I've got. Saying, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Good night, everybody. And just Good say night, no guys. to drugs. Thank you. And just say no <laughs> to drugs. Good night, guys. There Good you night. go. <laughs>